The home office can be a chance to organize ourselves a little better. Today I will share with you how I organize my information. The focus will be on the guiding principles, not on tools. Please keep in mind, I'm not at all perfect. So please comment on where you have better ideas and how you organize yourself. And maybe you take this exceptional time to get a little distance, think and reorganize a few things around you. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. When I started this video, I thought to tell you about my most important tools. The first topic on my list was information management. Then I discovered that this is enough for one video. Please comment if you are interested in a further video about the rest of my tools and how I work with them. Information management is not visible, but probably the most critical tool for my work. Let's start with three rules. As simple as possible, but not simpler. This rule is not from me, this is from another Swiss guy, Albert Einstein. Number two, searching is easy, finding is difficult. That is why we should focus on finding, not on filing. Time is a principal organizer. It is accepted and well known by most of the people I deal with. Firstly, the oldest tool for information management in my lab. I still own a few books, but most of them are purchased a long time ago. These three are the most important ones for me in electronics. All are references to get an overview of a topic. The authors put a lot of effort in organizing the information. Otherwise, I do no more buy a lot of books. And if I buy them, usually electronically. I'm also a big fan of audiobooks and podcasts. They are excellent for when I'm on the move. My favorites, by the way, are books about massive projects. Like my last ones, the build of the 747 Jumbo Jet or the SR-71. I admire what these engineers were able to get done in a short time. Most of my actual information comes from the internet. It comes with a significant disadvantage. Nobody does the organizing for me. I hop from one link to the other, always paying attention not to lose me. Hyperlinks are tremendous but dangerous. A few years ago, I found Evernote. This was a game changer for me because it has a web clipper. It runs on Windows and iOS, my leading platforms if it comes to information processing. As soon as I find an interesting article, I clip it. On the PC, I immediately tag it. On iOS, I put it in the folder exclamation mark stack. Why? I use my iOS devices everywhere and often I do not have the time to tag the article. Most important is that I capture it. In the past, I lost a lot of time to find a link a second time when I was back in the lab or office, because I did not take notes the first time. Sometimes I also capture ideas in a note. From time to time, usually on Monday mornings, when I also clean my mailbox and pay my bills, I go through all notes in the folder exclamation mark stack tag them and move them from exclamation mark stack to the folder of the current year. I only have one folder per year, not more. Why? Because many years ago I read somewhere that you have to organize your information with a goal of finding it later. With too many folders, the finding is hard because I often do no more remember what I thought during filing. Filing along the timeline for me is the best because I usually roughly know when I dealt with it. Like I said before in rule number three. Time always is one of the essential organizers for me because most people I deal with know and accept it. 
One outcome of this behavior is that I publish my videos every Sunday at 9 a.m. Swiss time sharp. So you can organize yourself if you want. A full text search does the searching. I use tags mainly to restrict the topic and to spark my fantasy when browsing on the way to new ideas. Like that, I rediscover always things I otherwise would have forgotten. Using tags and folders is an overkill in my eyes. Albert would not like it, I'm pretty sure. Keeping the tags clean and the list short is another task. About every month or two, I look for duplicate tags and tags with only one entry. Documents in those tags often can be retagged and combined with other topics. By the way, I use leading exclamation marks to get the folder and tags at the beginning of an alphabetical sort. Tags with exclamation marks are reading, YouTube idea and to do. Maybe I will later add one after retirement. Like that I do no more lose a lot of information. The effort for filing is small and the chance to find it is enormous. I use a paid version of Evernote. The main reason is that I use it for four devices. Otherwise I think the free of charge version would cover my needs. The next information source is still mail and document creation. In my regular profession, I work with large organizations where Windows and Office are the standards. This is the main reason I use it for me too. And of course, I'm used to it and know some tricks for efficiency. Let's start with Outlook. I use the same principles as shown before in Evernote. I also only have very few folders. Inbox, sent and read. All messages obviously start in the inbox, where they stay until they are treated. I created a so-called quick step to move the mail from the inbox into read when I'm done with it. Outlook automatically transfers sent messages to the sent folder. Like that, the inbox is the open points list and should not be too long. For important tasks, I sometimes create a calendar entry to be sure I deal with them. Also here, I created a quick step. I have quite a few mail accounts, some of them even on the systems of my customers. If possible, I auto forward all mails into my primary mailbox. Like that, it is harder to miss them. And I reduced the number of folders again. Every year I archive one year's worth of documents, usually two years back, because the chance I need a mail is reduced exponentially with time. So I archive every year two folders, sent and read. And I try to archive also the calendar entries, mainly because of nostalgic feelings. This is not so easy because of recurring events. If I search for an ancient mail, I still can mount those archives and after an hour or so, they are indexed and searchable. Anyway, I have full text search enabled at nearly everything on my PC. And now the most important rule here. I do not delete emails except marketing stuff. Why? Because like that, I'm much more motivated to search for something. If I would delete a lot, I always had an excuse to stop searching because I could assume that I deleted it. Now I know that I just did not search good enough and continue searching. Very motivating. My biggest problem is social media. They do not support proper task management. This is why I often forget to answer or by chance discover that I should have answered a long time ago. I appreciate your tricks for platforms like Twitter, Facebook Messenger and YouTube. The next place where I have lots of data is the file system of my PC. Here I have my essential and fast changing files in one folder and this folder is a Dropbox folder. There are a few exceptions. My YouTube projects, my music files and my family videos. 
The main reason for that is that these files are much, much bigger than the rest and very slow moving. From time to time I add a few files and they stay forever. For example, also on Monday mornings I archive my Sunday's YouTube project on a mechanical hard drive inside the PC and delete all files from my SSD. After that I start a task in second copy, an ancient but very reliable program that copies all specified files to a second hard drive. This drive is usually powered off. I only switch it on for a short time. Because Windows does not allow tags, I still use folders. Most applications also expect this concept. That's it. I also pay for the Dropbox service. Like that I have plenty of space and can store everything except the files mentioned. My experience with Dropbox was much better than with Microsoft's or Google's solutions. Maybe they are better now, but my decision is already a few years old. An essential advantage of Dropbox is that it keeps all file versions for 30 days. Like that I can recover deleted or overwritten files. I need this feature at least once a week when I forget to change the file name in one of my projects and Arduino overwrites my old one because it autosaves when I press upload. Or I make lots of changes and find out that these modifications were crap. Then I can return to a previous version, similar to GitHub but simpler. I do not back up my C drive. In case of a defect I install my PC completely new. This happens not very often and helps to keep Windows clean. I still have old drawers where I keep physical documents like diplomas, foreign currencies, receipts or manuals of my newly purchased devices. But I have to confess, these days I usually search online for a manual. Or go directly to YouTube if I have a particular problem. The last paper store is one folder with all accounting documents, also organized in years. This helps me to fill out the tax sheets. That's all. Maybe you do it similar to me, just with other tools, or you have a completely different system. In both cases it might be an idea to use this extraordinary time to organize you for the time after. Summarized. Finding is more critical than searching. In the last years I only bought a few books, mainly for reference. Most of my information comes via the browser. Evernote and especially its web clipper helps me to save all interesting links. I use Evernote on all my devices. This is very important because good ideas or links often appear somewhere on the road. Generally I use only a few folders, usually organized along the timeline. In Evernote I have one folder per year plus a folder called Stack, which is filled with untagged resources. Tags replace folders and information usually is found using full text search. In addition, tags are used for searching and to spark my imagination. I use Microsoft Office for mail and document creation. In Outlook I try to have only one inbox. All other accounts get a auto forward. In Outlook I also only have three folders, Inbox, Sent and Read. Sent and Read are archived every year. I keep two to three years in the current folders. Like that I nearly never have to go to the archives. I do not delete mails to keep the motivation for searching high. Unfortunately I have no concept for social media other than just use it. Especially Twitter is a pain in the in this respect. Dropbox and a detachable hard drive protects my PC file system. All relevant files are stored in the Dropbox folder. Inside this folder I use a folder structure. Applications expect it and Windows does not support file tagging. Dropbox keeps all old versions of a file for a specific time. A function loved and often used by me. I do not back up program files or the system drive. I install a new Windows if something happens. For file sharing I either use GitHub, Dropbox and in rare cases Google Drive. 
As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.